Hello, I'm John Malos, and welcome to this special edition of Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno. Today, a special interview with an actual Hollywood star from yesteryear. His name is Stan Livingston. He played Chip on My Three Sons. Remember that program? We're back with our interview with Stan Livingston in just a moment. Something. Well, I don't know. What is it, Chip? What was my mother like? Well, I've told you, Chip, but uh, maybe you've forgotten. It was quite a while ago. Uh, what makes you ask right now? Well, you know Miss Berger, my teacher? Huh? She gave me a homework assignment to write a composition called What My Mother Means to Me. And I've been thinking about it all night, and I don't know what to write. Well, maybe Mrs. Bergen would let you write about something else, Chip. Boy, you don't know Miss Bergen. When she gives you a homework assignment, you better do it and don't ask questions. Well, I, I think if she knew you didn't have a mother, Chip, she'd, uh, she'd have given you another assignment. Would you like me to call her at school tomorrow? Heck no. Do you want all the fellas to think I'm a skunky kid or something? <laughs> a skunky kid? Yeah, that's a kid who lets his parents talk to the teacher. <laughs> oh, I see. And, of course, it certainly brings back a lot of memories watching some of those old clips from My Three Sons, which, by the way, you can watch the reruns of My Three Sons each and every morning right here on Me TV Fresno at 7 o'clock. That's 7 a.m. If you like My Three Sons, you can watch it right here. Now, keep in mind, when they originally taped the program, this ran on ABC from 1960 to 1965, and then thereafter it switched over to CBS until 1972 when the program finally went off the air. My Three Sons was a very popular program. They taped 380 episodes, second only to Ozzie and Harriet, the most in television history. Now, Fred McMurray, he was an actor. He played Steve Douglas on the program. He was a widower. He had three sons to raise. And Stan Livingston played Chip as one of those three sons. Now, in September, on September the 8th to be exact, Ron Mortanian here in Fresno put together a cast of characters. I mean, stars from the yesteryear. He brought them together at the Fresno Armenian home on September the 8th and I went to the Fresno Armenian home to interview Stan Livingston, who had come in from Los Angeles to be a part of the gathering. We sat down for about a 20-minute interview. Today, we're going to play a portion of Stan Livingston's interview, who played Chip on My Three Sons. Well, I'm here with Stanley Livingston. Of course, he played Chip on My Three Sons uh, for many years there. And, uh, you know, come to find out you're a Dodger fan and I'm a Giants fan, but we'll still do the interview. <laughs> well, I was born in L.A., so it was fate. <laughs> I know. I had to be. Yeah. Well, the taping of uh, this interview, as of now, the Giants are ahead of the Dodgers in the standings, but there's a long way to go. they got, what, 23 games left, you know. Well, what's the baseball team in Fresno? The Fresno Grizzlies, they're actually the AAA affiliate for the Giants. There you go. Yeah, there we yeah, go. The big time one <laughs> of these days. <laughs> Let me ask you about My Three Sons, because that was obviously everybody's favorite program way back when. And how did you get the part as Chip? Well, I was already working in the industry. Uh, I started in 1955, and my first job was on Ozzie and Harriet. So, uh, Ozzie and Harriet was the longest running sitcom. My Three Sons eventually became the second longest running <laughs> sitcom. We did almost 400 shows. I was at a swim school. There was an agent there, and she thought I was cute and extroverted and <laughs> kept pestering my mom to send me out on something. And uh, my mom finally relented. And I went out on a couple jobs where I was cast as an extra. And then the Ozzie and Harriet came along, and again, I was cast as an extra. But for whatever reason, Ozzie Nelson just came up to me and said, hey, uh, could you say this line? And I said it, and he goes, great, just do it just like that. And they filmed it. When it was over, uh, he came up to my mom, and he said, I want to have him back. 
And so the Nelsons called me back from 1956, about 1960. I did about four or five shows a year as a neighborhood kid. Do you think you're better known or more well known for My Three Sons or Ozzie and Harriet? No, no, My Three Sons. Yeah. That, that you're even, the middle. The even Fred McMurray, who had a yeah. you know 50 year stellar career before My Three Sons. <laughs> if you look at his obituary, it said played the quintessential dad on My Three Sons. <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you know Tina Cole, I interviewed her as well, and she was telling me she went through this rigorous uh, interview process with uh, Freddie DeCorbita and of course Fred McMurray, and uh, but it wasn't that way for. You. No, I mean, what happened in 1959 when they were looking around for somebody to cast the family, the, the show was really conceived and built around Fred McMurray, who was tired of doing movies. He adopted two young girls, twins, and he wanted to stay at home and have a regular life, meaning you know, work from 8 to 5 and go home at night. Yeah. And when you're doing movies, you're out of town all the time for months on end. So he was cast, the show was built around him, then they started looking for the sons, and they knew about me because by that point I had done a lot of different TV shows, including Ozzie and Harriet, but I started doing movies. I was in Rally Around the Flag Boys with Paul Newman and Joanne Woodward. Mm -hmm. I was in Please Don't Eat the Daisies with Doris Day, David Niven, and some other features. And I had just finished doing a TV pilot for Jackie Cooper, and it was shot uh, right across from Ozzie and Harris. So they sort of knew about me and called me in, and I was hired on the spot. Well, you were a natural. There's no question about it. Tell me about Fred McMurray and what kind of a guy he was. Pretty much like you saw him on, you know, on the show. There, I worked with Fred for 12 years, and I never saw Fred lose his temper. Really? And, you know, we had things that were... Was he shy? No. You know, I think he was more shy as a human being in person than he yeah. would be as a performer. You know, we all learned to kind of just say, okay, I got to go do this now and be wild and crazy. But, um, you know, Fred was a consummate actor. The guy could segue from comedy. You know, he did The uh, the Egg and I, Nutty Professor, Absent Minded Professor, <laughs> I know. Uh, Shaggy Dog. But he could also be the heavy. Look at Double yeah. Indemnity or The Apartment, Kane Mutiny. You know, he was comfortable doing both kind of roles. Well, on My Three Sons, you were the middle son. You had uh, well, you had I mean, Rob I and you had... off as the youngest son. Yeah. yeah. But then Ernie came in. He, Ernie came in. What happened was myself, Don Grady played Robbie. Tim yeah. Considine was the original older brother. And the fifth year of the show, he left. And yeah. we were called My Three Sons. Well, by that point, my real brother, Barry Livingston, was playing a friend of mine on the show. And we needed a third son in a hurry. And <laughs> since there's no nepotism in show business, Barry got cast. <laughs> as Ernie, and we adopted him into the family, and that's how we ended up with a third son. So you ended up being the middle son on the program. Uh, youngest to the middle, and then Don left the show the last yeah. year. In fact, it's strange, but as a statistic, Fred McMurray and I were the only two characters on the show the entire 12 years. And, of course, you're watching an interview and listening to Stan Livingston, who played Chip on My Three Sons. He came in for uh, a celebrity event at the Fresno Armenian Home on September the 8th. It was put together by Ron Mortanian. We're going to continue our interview with Stan Livingston. Hey, he hasn't changed too much, huh? Just a little bit older, a little bit grayer, like all of us. What a great guy. Stay tuned. More of our interview with Stan Livingston continues after a brief timeout. I'm Chip Douglas. Welcome home, Mr. Duff. And I'm Ernie Douglas. James Bond, Secret Agent 007. And we're here to tell Ernie. you... Ernie! Just a minute, Uncle Charlie. Come on, Ernie, you're going to be late for school. We're doing a promo for Me TV and Jump. Ernie, Chip. Yes, Dad. Come here a minute, will you? We'll be down in a minute. As I was saying... <laughs> Tram, be quiet. <laughs> Tram? <laughs> hey, have you guys seen Robbie? Oh, hi, I'm Katie Douglas. We're my three sons. Ernie, I had to learn about women like Melissa through long, tough experience. Let me make my own mistakes. They're half the fun. And one daughter-in-law. Thanks. Now I really feel like one of the family. Watch me on me. Me TV. You think girls are just boys' gift wrap? <laughs> Weekday mornings at 7, 6 central on me TV. It's real neat. Young man. Hi. Hi. Hi, Trevor. Hi, Squirt. Excuse the old Oh, how was the dinner? Real neat. Hey, Dad, you know what? What? We had dessert first, and it sure makes the rest of the stuff taste better. <laughs> hey, what happened to these pants? Oh, I stopped to shinny up a tree in front of Sudsy's house. I guess I shinny down faster than I shinny it up. I just passed those pants last week. Hey, uh, pull the pants leg up. Let's take a look at the knee. Yeah, hey. Yeah, you skinned it a little. 
You better go up and wash the chip and uh, put a little antiseptic on it. Hmm? Isn't anybody going to help me? Oh, don't be a baby chip. No, maybe we should hire a trained nurse. I think you're old enough to do it yourself. It sure would be neat to have a mother. Let's go back now to our interview with Stan Livingston, who played Chip on My Three Sons. I hope you enjoy it. So, so was the 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 show? Uh, obviously, it was a, a good family life on My Three Sons. Did it was it a mirror image of your own real life, or was it completely different? Um, in a lot of ways, it mirrored it. Uh, you know, my parents fortunately were pretty normal people, and I would say my dad was a lot like Fred McMurray. He was just a very easygoing guy, yeah. and my mom, in spite of me being in show business, wasn't the traditional show business mom. In fact, after I was hired, she came down to the set for a couple months and said, "I'm out of here. I'm." Out somebody this is very boring and I'm gonna go home and take care of your brothers so she left but yeah our home life and, and really to keep it very normal uh, in between seasons when most kids who did shows back then went either to a school called Hollywood professional school or they had tutors and my parents go did you have a tutor no, I went back to public school. They go, you're going back to public school. You'll have to deal with this. And was that hard? It, it was just hard the first couple of days, but it was really the correct decision because, you know, you, you live, live your life with real people. You don't live your life with show business people. Right. So. But were you bothered in school because you were on the show? Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, the first day was very awkward because everybody's looking at you and can't believe that you're there. <laughs> And what do you do? What are you doing here? Side of it is most of the people want to be your friends, and it's an icebreaker. You know? Nobody picked on you, right? No, people picked on me. I got in a few fights, too. So it's not to say there weren't guys that were jealous, that, uh, and I'd have to defend the honor of my three sons, you know. So it, it would happen, yeah. You just I, There was one guy, when I was in junior, it, you know, when I was in grade school, it was actually okay, because people pretty much just... You know, like walking around in a stupor. By junior high, there's girls involved, and you know, and yeah. there's jealousies. But there was this one guy, just relentless, behind me every day when I'd go from class to class. And this one period, he'd come out and he'd get right behind me, he'd be whistling the My Three Sons theme, and then he kept <laughs> stepping on the back of my tennis shoe. And I'm like, ha ha, that's great, very funny. Quit doing it. And this guy did this day after day. And finally, I think it was about a week later, I just go. Couldn't take it anymore. I go, I gotta stop this guy. So I just, one day he stepped on my tennis shoe. I just, without warning, just threw my books around, just wham. This guy went down and it stopped. It stopped. And then, ironically, about a year later, I became friends with that guy. Did you go to the principal's office after that? Were you suspended? Were you... No, I think everybody didn't like that the guy was doing, yeah. but he was a big guy. He was way bigger than me, but I just thought... You if just I cold this, cocked him, huh? I just cold cocked him. He didn't know what hit him. <laughs> but that's the same. We actually became friends later. I think it was a yeah. couple semesters later, and the guy said, yeah, I'm really sorry I did that. I don't know why I did it. And, you know. So when My Three Sons was done, when it was over, uh, and it ran for, what, 11 or 12 years, like you said, um, were you kind of typecast? Did you have a hard time getting a job? Yeah, yeah. I, well, there was limitations back then just because of the way the industry worked. Um, you know, when you came off a show <laughs> for 12 years, you know, yeah. that, that's it. You were really, you're set in stone by then. But, you know, some of the cast, it, it worked to your advantage and not because a lot of casting people wanted you because you were on the show and thought you could deliver a certain type of, you know, role and that they could count on you to do that. And then other ones, they just you know, they didn't want to give you a break because you yeah. had already done the same, especially in the movie industry. And, you know, if you're on a series, you want to be doing film. And I wanted to do but film. it's natural. Everything. I mean... You get on the interviews. You know, the casting people wouldn't see you if they were of that mind. But you look at any of these shows like Gunsmoke, Festus is Festus, uh, Chip is Chip. Ernie is Ernie, and it's just... And, you know, yeah. actors are capable of doing all sorts of things and creating characters is what we do, but because of that, you're not given the opportunity, which I felt was short-sighted. The other short-sightedness, and, I mean, they don't have that anymore. If you're on a TV series, it's assumed you're going to go into the movies. See how you do, because you're bringing millions of people in to buy tickets. Right. Back then, I mean, when you think about what TV was in those days, you know, you have a network show now. You've got, what, 20 million people watching? Yeah. Network show back in the 60s you had 60 to 80 million people a week watching your show. So you would have pulled an incredible audience and in the right vehicle. Well, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't have cable or satellite TV back then. That's what no, we had, you only had three networks. We had ABC, NBC, CBS, and a yeah. few local you know, shows like yeah. Chuckle the Clown and stuff. Yeah. And <laughs> Skipper Frank. <laughs> what <do> you, <laughs> so what did you do? 
Um, I still worked as an actor. I was fortunate from the time my three sentences went off. I just, you know, became a journeyman actor, and you'd go from show to show, like you know, room two twenty-two, and whatever the shows were, you'd just do a part on them and move on to the next one. What happened with me towards the end of my three sentences, when I got to be about fifteen, sixteen, I got interested on the other side of the camera, and I used to drive the camera guys crazy, like, hey, what's this? Why were you? Why do you have? Wanted to direct. Wanted to direct. Wanted to know about film, camera, and you know, I. Started going to school, uh, college at night, and took camera classes. And you know, we remember film. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, we film movie Stone, age. Stone Age. Yeah, I remember cutting <laughs> film with you know on a movieola. So yeah. and then a chem table and and all that. But and then yeah, video came in, and that was expensive in the beginning because you had the large format. But uh, you know, now we're in the digital realm, and you can do it at home. Hard to believe that we're watching Stan Livingston, the man who actually played Chip on My Three Sons many, many, many years ago. Of course, on ABC, where the series first began, and then switching over to CBS until 1972, when the program finally uh, went off the air. But one of the longest-running programs, they taped 380 episodes. We're going to continue with our conversation with Stan Livingston right here on Connect With Me in just a moment. Don't go away. Frigidaire. It means the first electric refrigerator. The first room air conditioner. The first compact electric range. It means a history of innovations that give you the best results and make your home life better. And now we introduce our latest innovation in cooking, the Frigidaire Gallery Range with Symmetry Double Ovens. It's designed to cook multiple dishes at multiple temperatures so you can prepare the entire meal at the same time. And our latest innovation in cleaning, the Frigidaire Orbit Clean Dishwasher. Its unique wash arm gives you four times more water coverage for a consistently better clean. Frigidaire, over 90 years of legendary innovation. One of the longest running sitcoms on television, television history that is, 380 episodes taped. Of course, Stan Livingston playing Chip on My Three Sons. We continue now with our conversation. What are you doing now, uh, Stanley? I have a production company, First Team Productions, and uh, I've got actually a, a, feat, a film opening. At, it opens the Cinerama Film Festival in Los Angeles on uh, September 28th. Uh, it's a film called In the Picture, and get this, it was actually shot in Cinerama. It's the first Cinerama, three-strip, 35-millimeter uh, film shot in Cinerama uh, in 50 years since the last film, which was How the West Was Won, which, incidentally, I was in. I was in the uh, How the West is one. So, yeah, we're kicking. What's off. the film about? Uh, you know how we did. Well, do you remember Cinerama at all? A little bit. Well, do you remember the first one? Well, let me explain what Cinerama was. Cinerama came out in 1953. What it was was the studios trying to come up with a process to lure theater goers back into the theater because TV had just come out and they were losing audiences and they didn't know what to do. And they were trying to come up with an idea. They came up with a widescreen process, which was Cinerama, which they were hoping, which it did. It lured audiences back into the theater. But it's very similar to widescreen now it's if you get it very yeah. wide but the difference is a big difference between what Cinerama is and what say for instance if you're watching IMAX you know you have an extremely large screen but it's flat Cinerama you're sitting in a curved screen so it emulates almost the field of vision it's you literally right. can see over here so when you see motion it, it looks real because you know how when you're driving somewhere if you look straight ahead you're kind of going at it but if you're in a car, it's blurring because it's going by you. You get that sensation in Cinerama. So what we did is we did kind of a mock travelogue, which is what the early Cinerama movies were. This, this is Cinerama, yeah. Cinerama Holiday, uh, Seven Wonders of the World. And they were all kind of these, like I say, travelogue things. It's an excuse to show off the medium. So How long is the movie? It's about 35 minutes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, believe me, we didn't want to do much more of that because the camera weighs 350 pounds, and that's without the blimp. And it's really interesting to work in the format, unlike your camera that's way back there. A lot of times the camera was this close to us, yeah. and you're looking at this beast that's about five times the size of that light, yeah. and it's about six inches from your head, and you're going, are you sure you're not too close? They're going, you're like a speck in it. <laughs> 
What was different about Hollywood back when you were doing My Three Sons as opposed to now? I mean, I think I can answer my own question, but I want to hear it from you. Are you talking about Hollywood itself? Hollywood, making movies, what's different about the business? Agents, the way you get hired, I don't know. To me, it just seems like people do it more as a job. I think the people that did it back then really, really cared about what they were doing. Um, you know, now I'm not, I'm not so sure. I mean, it just seems to be that people get involved and, you know, they're looking for quick success. Where, you know, the people that I did it, it was like a journey. They were in it for their, their lives and however. And, you know, you do different projects, whether you went up or down. Um, Any regrets? Um, just that those casting <laughs> people weren't so <laughs> narrow-minded back then. I would have liked to have done a lot more movies. But, uh, like I said, I got interested in the other side, went on the other side, and, you know, I, I, I'm happy with what I did. You know, I had to start all over again as a director-writer. You're doing industrials, educational films, music videos, but, you know, you know, I've done some feature films now and TV series, and, you know, you, you do whatever comes up. Are you recognized at all by anybody? You know, without the beard, I'm probably more recognizable. I think the beard throws people people yeah. off. They're, they're still, the, the problem is people are looking to see a, a 10-year-old kid, yeah. you know, or a 15-year-old kid, or an 18-year-old kid, <laughs> not a 62-year-old guy, so that throws them off. Oh, you're 62? I thought you turned 39 yesterday. Uh, well, 39 again. <laughs> I'll be 62 in November, so it's coming up. Yeah, and what do you hope to accomplish? I mean, you have many years ahead of you. Uh, you're still fairly young, and uh, you could you could be in the business. Now look at Clint Eastwood. He's 82. He's still making movies. Still making movies, yeah. No, I mean, you know, there's certain people that endure. I mean, when you look at all the TV series that have been produced and the fact that here we are, me TV every morning, I mean, would you have ever 50 years later have thought, yeah, the show's still going to be on, and people love it and are watching it. I mean, I'm, I'm... Why are those shows better than the quality of the shows that I'm watching today? For example, um, The Kardashians. Oh, my God, give me a break. Yeah, you know, reality TV. Yeah. I'd much rather sit back and watch me TV than watch NBC, although I do, I, I do like Howard Stern on the, uh, what's that called? America's Got Talent. Got talent. But it, it, TV is crummy to me. It's lousy programming. It is, but I mean, you know, it, the, the problem is I think there was a pride in what was being done then where uh, reality TV came about because it was a Screen Actors Guild strike and the producers and the network go, we got airspace, where are we going to put here? And it was a quick fix, and for some reason it, they said, oh, oh, this works. We got something. Let's replicate it and replicate it, and now it's become what it's become. But And, you know, to be really fair, I've seen some reality TV that's, you know, kind of interesting to watch. But... For the most part, it's it's you know very voyeuristic. You're just dropping in on people's lives and seeing them fight about boyfriends and marriages and yeah, you know, and the languages. Well, you know the shows they were actually written by pretty big time writers. Our shows were uh, one of them was Neil Simon, Danny Simon. I mean, a lot of great writers wrote our shows. So their story, their structure. These guys knew what they're doing. They knew how to entice an audience and you know get them to watch a show and to watch the characters, love the characters, and love the episodes. All right, now tell me, if you just joined us and you're watching that interview, who is that? Do you recognize him? That's Chip, of course, Stan Livingston from My Three Sons, a television series that ran many, many moons ago. I remember watching it as a kid myself from 1960 to 65 on ABC and then again on CBS. And I'll tell you what, great guy, a gathering of stars at the Fresno Armenian home back in September. And our interview with Stan Livingston will continue, and I hope you stay tuned with more of Connect With Me. Fasten your bones and let's twizzle. Weeknights, do the twizzle with me. Everybody, start in doing the twizzle. Everybody, if you're ready to sizzle, you twist a little and you twist a lot. And when you really get hot, that's the twizzle. Weeknights starting at 9, 8 central on MeTV. Kathy. Hi, Chip. Hi. Coming in? Well, I'm going to ask you something first. Is it about math homework? No. Did you get all the problems? I think so. Me too, but my dad helped me. I'm on my own. My parents are ignoring the new math. Well, I was going to ask you something. Hurry up. The bell's going to ring. Well, would you go to a teenage party with me? Who's having a party? Me. That's how come I can invite you. Or the other guys get their invitation. And they might invite you first. A boy-girl party? Uh-huh. Chip, that's wonderful. I'm so tired of those kid-stuffed birthday parties and those silly girls' pajama parties. Same here. 
You know what I mean. Real grown-up stuff. Well, Saturday night. I'll be there. And my father doesn't have to drive me either. I can get there by myself on my bike. <laughs> I often wonder how Chip would have fared in today's world of sitcoms on television. Anyway, the series uh, airing for many years on ABC and CBS, and, uh, you know, he played a pretty good role. He played one of those three sons. He played alongside Fred McMurray, who actually played Steve Douglas. He was a widower. We go back to my interview with Stan Livingston when he was actually here in Fresno back in September. Do you like your newfound fame on MeTV? I'll take whatever I can get. Hey, listen, when it came about, I was like, well, what is MeTV? And they go, well, I said, oh, I get Chip it. again. These guys are trying to do what TV Land did and, and Nick and Knight, you know, 20, 30 years ago. But yeah, any, any place you're playing is, is nice to be there. Well, it's nice to be above the ground, so yeah. these days. Even though it was 50 years ago. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I'm just completely, I mean, it's, it's, it's really pleasurable. I, I grew up in Hollywood. I never really watched our show when it was on. I didn't watch a lot of those shows. And if you're doing the work, you don't care. You've just done it. You're not going to watch it. But and living in Hollywood, you're kind of jaded because most people don't bother you there and they never come up to you. But it wasn't until I went out of town and started doing plays and when I was in my 30s that I realized, like, you know, I think people actually did like this show. People are going crazy. What is this? <laughs> and I, I couldn't believe that it just kind of touched a chord, I guess, in people. And they feel like we're part of their past, their background, that they either went to school with us or like we were a neighbor that you knew when you were a kid. And we're welcomed into their homes and into their lives. And it's still going on. Fred McMurray, the best actor you've ever ever worked with, or what do you think? Uh, well, I've worked with a lot of pretty good actors. Paul Newman was pretty good. Uh, I forgot about Evan, him. But, yeah. for, you know, Fred, I, I, I love Fred. He was just such a great guy, and I mean, such an inspiration to watch, because there's a guy that, you know, we're he worked very hard. I mean, it may not show because it looks so seamless when you see the finished product. But he made it look easy, huh? He did, but he was there from 8 o'clock to 6 o'clock at night, you know, every day, and he was in every single scene. I never saw him get mad or, you know, have a blowout or a meltdown or anything. You know, it just was a very easygoing guy, and if there was a problem, you know, we'd stop shooting and talk about it and figure it out and then keep going. Where, you know, I've been on sets where people go bananas and have meltdowns, and you're going, what the hell is was this? Was he your father figure on the set? Yeah, I think he was for a lot of people. You know, you, what you have to understand, when Fred came to My Three Sons, it was an unusual situation. I, I can't even think of anything that parallels it today. Fred was a huge, huge, huge movie star. In 1959, 1960, he had 60 feature films that he was a star before he came film. It was unheard of that a star of his caliber was going to do a TV series. Well, that was so remarkable, Bob. But what happened was, because of the stature of having him in the show, all rubbed off on the show and the producers and everything, we'd have... You know, like the president would come to visit him. Right. Uh, his best friend was like Ronald Reagan and Jack. So what Kennedy. president came to visit? Uh, Eisenhower. Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, just people would come down on the set to, to see Fred, you know, and the other guy they would come down to see was later on, Fred, Fred de Cordova was... Oh, yeah. He was the producer of the Carson show. Yeah, I mean, all the time, his buddy Jack Benny or, yeah. you know, uh, what's it, George Burns, yeah. Willie Shoemaker. <laughs> I mean, oh, they're all buddies. They's Ronald Reagan. They all play cards together, so... They so could, you saw all those guys. Yeah, they'd just be come down the set and hang they'd out. And they'd want to meet Fred, too, so and the, <laughs> the ones that didn't know him. So because of the, the luster of these two, you know, gentlemen, it was... Uh, Why do you think Fred McMurray took a step down and started doing TV? <laughs> there was a reason. Actually, he, uh, June, and he had adopted twins. He had twin daughters, and if you're doing a movie, you're gone three or four months a year, and if you do a couple movies, you're gone all the time. So My Three Sons was a f the ability for him to go stay in L.A., shoot a show, come to work 8 o'clock in the morning, go home at night, and be with your kids. And then yeah. because it was arranged to shoot around him, we shot for three months, he would go away for the summer and spend the entire summer with his family and then come back at the end and shoot a couple more months. So it was a way to stay in the business, make a lot of money. He was a half owner of the show. And... Uh, you know, it's funny because that's what I was saying. When you look at his obituary, with the obituary that I, I saw, it says didn't say name. anything about all those great movies he was in. It said, you know, the quintessential dad on my three sons. <laughs> and that he was. Well, Chip, Stanley Livingston, hey, hey it's so good much. to see you. And uh, I'm going to keep watching your show on MeTV. Uh, well, I'm going to watch it on MeTV, too. <laughs> <laughs> it's about the only place you can watch it. So Thanks for spending so much time with us. I oh, really no appreciate it. It's a pleasure meeting you. Nice Thank meeting you, too. All right, Stanley Livingston.
And of course, you've been watching my interview with Stan Livingston, who played Chip on My Three Sons many, many moons ago. He was here for a celebrity event at the Fresno Armenian Home back in September. In fact, during that event, I interviewed many of the celebrities from yesteryear. You also might remember Tina Cole, who played on My Three Sons. I interviewed her, so look for that future interview. Also at that event was Tony Dow and Eddie Mecca. Kathy Garver. Many of those stars you might recognize from watching television many, many years ago. They're still around. They're still kicking around. They're down in Los Angeles. But Tina Cole, she lives up in Sacramento. I did the interview with her as well. So look for those particular interviews in shows to come right here on Connect With Me. That's our special edition for now. I'm John Malos. We'll see you on Connect With Me on MeTV Fresno the next time. Thank you for being with us. Thank you.